Hey everybody, today we're going to talk about how to make inventory items. So right now I have 25 items. The grayed out ones are not clickable. The colored ones, there's a hover over button. And when you click on it, it will show you an info box displaying the item um, and the number of items that it holds, um, as well as like a little description of what that item is. And I will show you how I made it. So it's all done through switches and conditions. Um, I went through and I basically switched all those on to show you, but it would normally all be off to start. With conditions, you go through the list. I did all mine through global because that way at any point in the game, uh, if it gets turned on, it will check for it. If you were to do local, it would just be for that level specifically that you were making it for. I then made an inventory list with every item that I wanted in my inventory and to add a name was very simple you just click on the list in the naming option you can type what you want and that sets it so I did that for every item and then I wrote if the switch is equal to on it shows an image map and an image map basically allows you to add a hotspot and a ground and hover button uh, depending on the image um, so in this case this is umami um, and it's switched to on, so it allows you to hover over it, which you can see by the orange hover button, and then adds a hotspot to it, which calls a common event of Umami, which is the description box. Basically just shows that image once it's clicked, as well as uh, the number of items listed. Um, so I did that for every item going down. Um, so on the flip side, if the switch is off, it then just shows a grayed out image uh, with no hotspot, making it unclickable. And I did that for every item on the inventory. Um, I also did a separate image box just specifically for the back button, uh, which when you click it just calls a previous scene. Setting up the inventory was a little time consuming. So basically we erase the text first because we don't know what it has been called previous. So we just start with a flat base. I then erase every other inventory picture that might be called uh, by being clicked on. And then at the very end, I show that description, which in this case is the umami and looks kind of like that. So it's just a PNG file showing the image with the description laid out in this specific way. If the item has a number variable where you can gain more than one of those items, I did a check number. Uh, that way, if it's less than nine, it, it positions it in a certain X and Y axis. But if it's more than 10, I swapped it over to be a little bit different. That way I can just keep the number centered within the box, depending on if it's multiple item, multiple numbered items or not. So right now we're checking global number 51, which is a takoyaki. No other item has that specific number. Um, so by calling that global number, it's made it specific to that takoyaki. So, so let's say we want to start from scratch and we just want to show the takoyaki. So I would turn on the switch. I would navigate to where I have it set for takoyaki. This switches on the picture. It does not switch on the number variable. So then you also have to add a number variable. And all these are all inventory items that can have more than one item associated to it. So for the takoyaki, I would then set the value and I can set it to whatever I want. We can see that the takoyaki is now set to on. No other, no other item is on. If I click it, it now gives me the number 10 because that's what I set in it for the number variable. Again, the switch just turns on the image. The number variable turns on how many of that item there is. Let's say we, uh, let's say we added one. So now I click on it and I have a value of one because I added one value to it. And the, you could keep adding values and then subtract them if they're used. Um, that would make it so that if the player can get multiple of the item, it would, it would automatically keep track and, and add that number in addition to. So let's pretend like this is scene one and on scene two, we added another value. 
Now, because it's a global number, it added two of them. And, you know, because it's global, it can be called at any time throughout the scene. If it was just, if you did a local number, it would only call what you added within that scene. And then if the scene changed, it would go back to zero because it wasn't referencing the whole game. If you are adding info boxes like I did, I did run parallel uh, on the common event. Um, so I named it matcha and I added uh, run parallel and what that does is uh, within the inventory it allows this common event to run on top of the scene that we made for inventory down here. So I created this scene and then I'm calling, uh, I'm calling the common events through the hotspot. I am calling call common event takoyaki which is on that other page that I just showed you. And this is running parallel so that when I click it, it then brings up this at the same time while running all of this. And that's about it. If you have any other questions, let me know in the comments. Talk to you guys later.